Thank you so much for keeping us company. Again, this is why in the morning, Y254 TV is the station you're watching. Time for health. We want to talk about the non-communicable diseases. I'm speaking to Mary, Dr. Mary Amuyonzi. Uh, she's the Secretary NCD Alliance of Kenya. She will help us to understand how the situation has been during uh, this COVID-19 or since COVID-19. How have they been faring on uh, the people with non-communicable diseases? diseases and what needs to be put in place as far as the government is of concern and the Ministry of Health. Send us your comments to all our social media platforms, Y254 channel on Facebook and Instagram at Y254 channel on Twitter. My name is Dereva Hilary. Welcome to the broadcast. Good morning, Dr. Ari. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Now, um, <laughs> I think, I think it, it sounds a joke, but uh, many people do not know what non-communicable diseases are. Uh, like, is it communicable? No. Mm -hmm. I know a number of them, but why don't you tell, them, tell us, our viewer, what non-communicable diseases are? Non-communicable diseases are diseases that you get not from one person to another. Mm -hmm. They are chronic conditions and uh, the best way to explain this is by giving examples for instance uh, diabetes we all know about diabetes most people know about diabetes mm -hmm. uh, hypertension mm -hmm. uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, we have asthma which is quite common especially among children mm -hmm. and then you have um, um, kidney failures, kidney diseases, mm -hmm. just to use um, uh, simple, simple terms so that we can all understand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you, we, we use the term non-communicable diseases, it can be very confusing, right. especially for a lot of our people in the communities. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have sickle cell, which is also a, another big um, NCDs. And currently we're also looking at mental illness mm -hmm. as part of the diseases that we consider as non-communicable. In, in fact, mm -hmm. WHO now considers them non-communicable diseases and mental health. Mm -hmm. So they've been packaged into one. In terms of um, uh, prevalence of non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. over time, uh, the numbers of people uh, suffering from non-communicable diseases have gone high. Mm -hmm. um, Every one of us knows somebody who has diabetes. Mm -hmm. We know somebody who has hypertension. Mm -hmm. We know somebody who has cancer, or we lost somebody to cancer. Mm -hmm. We know many children who have sickle cell. Um, some people are undergoing dialysis. A lot of us have contributed to some of these medical expenses. So non-communicable diseases are arising um, conditions that are really dif disenfranchising many countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Kenya is one of those countries that uh, whose prevalence and uh, levels of premature death to non-communicable diseases is going up. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me just before you also have a close person in your right. family mm -hmm. with uh, hypertension and diabetes. My mother has hypertension. Mm -hmm. So each one of us has a story to tell of uh, somebody or a relative, a friend, or ourselves, <laughs> who are taking um, treatment for non-communicable diseases. All right, we we are in a pandemic which is COVID nineteen, and uh, for a couple of times, we have had the uh, officials from the Ministry of Health and even the WHO saying mm -hmm. uh, they are people with underlying conditions. And uh, I would want to know, uh, maybe do you know, do you have the statistics how? Um, COVID-19 patients have been faring on, especially with underlying conditions in our country. How is the situation? Do we have guidelines for them? Do we have um, protocols for these particular persons now that we've been told over time of uh, underlying conditions? Yes, and this is just not in Kenya. It's global that um, there's a realization mm -hmm. through this pandemic mm -hmm. that uh, globally we haven't paid adequate attention to NCDs. Mm -hmm. Tedros, in launching this week mm -hmm. for NCD activities, talked about um, the pandemic really exposing our level of unpreparedness to deal with non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the almost 33% to 35% of the fatalities of people who have passed on in Kenya, Mm -hmm. have been due to non-communicable diseases as an underlying condition. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think we've seen 
some level of stigma towards people with um, an underlying condition mm -hmm. or some some level of brevity of people saying because i don't have an underlying condition i shall not get covid 19 mm -hmm. covid 19 mm -hmm. and um, as uh, cs kagwe says we all can get it mm -hmm. what the problem the challenge has been is that the severity and the outcomes mm -hmm. for people with underlying conditions are are worse than if you do not have an underlying condition mm -hmm. and therefore i have some statistics here which i didn't want to um, um i carried with me so that uh, we can uh, look at what has happened over time right. that uh, almost 33 percent uh, of the fatalities have been due to non-communicable diseases hypertension has mm -hmm. accounted for around 17 percent diabetes um, 15 percent chronic lung disease 10%, cancer 10%, and HIV 4% of mm -hmm. the fatalities. It doesn't mean that if you have diabetes and you get COVID, mm -hmm. you, will, uh, you will die. Mm -hmm. I think we need to clarify that. Yeah. It just means that the, uh, the outcomes uh, will be a bit more severe mm -hmm. than if you didn't have. Right. But also what has happened, Hillary, is the fact that um, then people who've had, uh, who have these conditions are scared to go to a health facility. Or even families are worried that mm -hmm. you see them start having uh, a, a cold, a cough, and you think, oh, COVID has arrived. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? You go into a panic. I think what we are assuring people is that the government has released protocols on how to... Um, to prevent mm -hmm. uh, yourself from getting uh, COVID-19. We know about social distancing, we know about wearing masks. So whether you have an underlying, underlying condition or not, mm -hmm. you need to wear a mask, you need to social distance, you need to sanitize. And also if you do not have this condition and mm -hmm. you live with somebody with that condition, you should prote protect this person mm -hmm. from getting uh, exposed to COVID by protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole of society action. It's a whole of society uh, behavior change mm -hmm. that we are protecting ourselves mm -hmm. and we are protecting our loved ones from con uh, getting infected with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But for those with underlying conditions, especially non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. there are protocols that have been released by the government. What we want to tell them is that go for your routine care, mm -hmm. access find mechanisms of getting access to your regular treatment, uh, make your visits to your physicians. If you cannot get, uh, make the visits in person, have call in with your physician to ensure that you do not miss mm -hmm. your, uh, your routine care from, from the physicians. Again, for um, people with, um, without these conditions, mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of, um, uh, in terms from a behavior change perspective, We've seen a lot of um, negligence mm -hmm. on the part of many people. Right. Uh, people have stopped wearing masks. Or if they wear them, they wear them on their chins. People have stopped washing hands. People have stopped caring. Mm -hmm. the, and uh, you, you walk around, you drive around, and you basically are wondering, has COVID ended? Mm -hmm. uh, have we really flattened the curve? Mm -hmm. Are we believing that the curve has flattened? Especially now the numbers are going down. Yes, especially now the numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. And why are the numbers going down? So I think we still need, cannot lower our guard currently mm -hmm. because the infection is still with us and we need to protect each other from getting uh, exposed to COVID-19. All right. Now, before we get to the agenda of the year on uh, NCDs, do you think uh, people or persons with non-communicable diseases during this particular period of time have been given keen attention by the government or it was before? How is the situation now? Have they been catered for uh, better compared to before COVID or it's now even worse? Uh I think what COVID has done, and I started by saying what Tedros, um, uh, Dr. Tedros was the, um, the general director of um, uh, WHO Global, mm -hmm. said is true to Kenya. Uh, he mentioned the fact that the pandemic has actually shown us we haven't paid enough attention to, mm -hmm. COVID, to NCDs. Mm -hmm. If you look at budgetary allocation by the government, it's around 6% of the health budget goes into NCDs. Uh, the numbers may have changed, but uh, as of, we checked as of July, that was the, um, the rate. Mm -hmm. I think what has happened 
especially with everybody focusing on people with underlying conditions, mm -hmm. has been most exposed to infections and the outcomes being worse, what has happened is there's more attention to NCDs currently at the national level. Mm -hmm. The acting DG for Health in Kenya, Dr. Moth, released guidelines very early to all county governments mm -hmm. in terms of um, ensuring that routine clinics for NCDs continue um, and encouraging and advising people with NCDs on taking extra care to ensure that they do not miss their, um, their routine care, they continue with medication so that they can be protected. I think there's a lot more attention mm -hmm. to NCDs now than initially. Uh, um, and I think as a country, we've, um, and globally really, uh, the rally to focus on NCDs has been going on. The call to action for NCDs, this have come up with the realization that a lot of our hospitals are spending a lot of time, uh, health workers spending a lot of time uh, caring for people with NCDs. Mm -hmm. um, we've been told that hospital admissions are 55% for NCDs. Mm -hmm. uh, deaths uh, account for almost 30% um, of the deaths are uh, due to NCDs and some statistics actually show hospital deaths 50% mm -hmm. are due to NCDs. So I think increasingly and with the pandemic we are now getting a lot more traction to addressing mm -hmm. NCDs in a more focused way than we have seen. Mm -hmm. But again it's not about lip service. Mm -hmm. It's about investing in the health infrastructure is about a uh, commitment to addressing the risk factors mm -hmm. for NCDs mm -hmm. and active participation mm -hmm. of people living with NCDs mm -hmm. in the fight against NCDs. All right, now I understand it's a week global for NCDs. Mm -hmm. Now what is the call for this particular agenda this week? Um, in 2011, uh, there was a UN um, um, a UN summit that addressed NCDs. It was one of, the, it was the second one after HIV. Mm -hmm. And um, in that we were looking at mainly the four NCDs, the four risk factors and four NCDs. Mm -hmm. We were looking at um, um, diabetes, hypertension, uh, no, uh, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, um, chronic lung diseases, and um, um, yeah. Uh, and chronic lung diseases. So mm -hmm. after that, and the four risk factors, which were mainly poor diets, uh, lack of physical activity, harmful use of uh, alcohol mm -hmm. and tobacco use. And now increasingly then we added on um, uh, mental health and also air pollution as a key risk factor. Mm -hmm. So over time, we've had commitments made by government. Mm -hmm. We have commitment ma commitments made by private sector. We have commitments made by individual uh, individuals in terms of supporting the call to action. Mm -hmm. But uh, the annual week, therefore, is a call for action on NCDs, which draws on outrage, energy, inspiration, determination, and optimism to focus efforts on ensuring NCD prevention mm -hmm. and control, get the attention and the action that's required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So essentially, um, the campaign theme for 2020 mm -hmm. is accountability, a crucial force for good governance, political and programmatic change. Mm -hmm. Again, we make commitments. We, as a government, we sign on it. Mm -hmm. As uh, our president attended the UN summit, Mm -hmm. We said we will commit to the health, strengthening the health system. We'll commit to providing access to essential care. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to implementation, we always, always mm -hmm. run short. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the call is on accountability, pushing for progress. Mm -hmm. That we've made all these commitments over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are signatories to all these commitments. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to implementation, we run short. And therefore, we are calling for accountability. We are calling for governments to recommit mm -hmm. to supporting and making an input mm -hmm. into um, fighting NCDs. And also, given the fact that the pandemic is here and has shown us the flaws in the way we manage NCDs, mm -hmm. we are then being reminded that this is the time to act. 
and mm -hmm. all of us can act mm -hmm. on these cities. All right. Now, as you make the call to, to the government, who are you targeting, who can participate, and what is the role of the NCD Kenya? NCD Kenya brings together uh, all uh, stakeholders mm -hmm. in, in NCDs in the country, NGOs, government agencies, uh, associations, individuals, civil society organizations. So it's, a, um, it's an association that brings together every actor mm -hmm. on NCDs. And we actually really encourage people living in the NCDs and we have a platform for them to come and talk about NCDs in, in the country and especially how they affect them. Mm -hmm. So the call is for all of us to take action, mm -hmm. is for government, the, the, for starting with the office of the president, to the office of the CS, to our county leadership, MPs, women reps, MCS, every decision maker, because mm -hmm. we are all affected. True. We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. And the need for all of us to take action and to be part of the accountability process, mm -hmm. that we've made this commitment. Every single day, we are losing people to NCDs. Mm -hmm. Every single day, we are having a Harambe here or there. People are dying of preventable diseases. And I think that's what we need to say. NCDs are preventable. Mm -hmm. We do not want to lose people to conditions that are preventable. And that's why we stand here, we sit here, we attend these uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. to tell people that we can prevent NCDs. Mm -hmm. And where we cannot prevent them, we can take care of our patients better. Mm -hmm. And where we are losing patients, we can provide palliative care for our patients mm -hmm. and for our sisters and brothers who have NCDs. So mm -hmm. the call is for all of us mm -hmm. to act. And act uh, with purpose and act with commitment to ensure that we prevent. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot prevent, we provide the adequate care for people mm -hmm. living with NCDs. Mm. You just mentioned that 6% uh, is allocated to the NCDs by the government, but I'm also looking into if the government can, can help us prevent uh, the NCDs, uh, what are these particulars that can be done? What are these things that need to be done to prevent? What is the role of the government? And even when it comes to controlling, how else can we control the persons with uh, non-communicable diseases in our society? So if we look at um, the key risk factors, we start there. Mm -hmm. Tobacco use. Right. We have tobacco legislation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just enforcement. Harmful use of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Again, you have alcohol advertisements go running all the time. We have a law that limits alcohol uh, advertisements. We have a law that limits alcohol consumption for children. We have a law that limits the hours of when retailers can sell alcohol. So in, on alcohol, there's a lot of uh, enforcement that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And we say harmful use of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then you have poor diets. Again, there's the culture of fast food in this country where um, w eateries are just being promoted. Uh, sugary drinks. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries have put in place a sugar tax. And therefore, in those countries, you begin to see a reduction in the consumption of sugar, mm -hmm. uh, sugary, um, sugary drinks. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is on air pollution. So what are we doing with air pollution in this country? Mm -hmm. uh, where are we in terms of globally, even in terms of the emissions? So these are things we can prevent. And then physical activity. Mm -hmm. Again, we've seen a lot of activity around during this COVID period. We saw a lot of people take, take, take off the, where they are running shoes, begin to run on the streets. So encouraging physical activity. When children go back to school, ensuring that physical activity is part of what they do mm -hmm. on a regular basis. So if we look at the, the risk factors, there are best buys and best practices that can be implemented mm -hmm. with the support of the system and uh, with ensuring that uh, we begin to also sensitize our children and our communities mm -hmm. on how best they can protect themselves from NCDs. Again, they are called lifestyle diseases, and we are all uh, culprits uh, mm -hmm. on some of the, uh, our behaviors in terms of exposing ourselves to NCDs in this country. Yes. Actually, you just mentioned something I wanted to bring you on. Like, uh, a condition like diabetes is called uh, lifestyle. Do you think we have good public awareness in terms of what 
sugar is can do or what they can do to you or do we have that discipline of fast foods and what we should be having in terms of diet and nutrition um this the biggest challenge i think is um our health seeking behavior as a people also mm -hmm. in as much as we talk about these things is um do we really think we're at risk mm -hmm. do we go for screening for instance um only 44% of Kenyans have ever been screened for hypertension, mm -hmm. blood pressure. And also maybe when you go to a health facility, it's not readily offered or um, uh, there are other challenges in terms of when I go there, I've gone for malaria treatment mm -hmm. or for um, antenatal care, mm -hmm. do, are we routinely then assessed for blood pressure? Mm -hmm. For blood sugar, it's even more dire. The uh, step survey done in Kenya showed 88% of people had never mm -hmm. uh, been assessed for blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So for you to know you are even at risk, you need to be screened for it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even the COVID, uh, this COVID period has shown a lot of us that we may be having underlying conditions and we don't know. Mm -hmm. You may be pre-diabetic or you may be having diabetes and you don't know. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has ever um, measured your sugar levels. So, again, that's another area of concern. Um, the other issue is cholesterol uh, when it comes to um, cardiovascular diseases. Some of us have never really had uh, our, our cholesterol checked. So, mm -hmm. one is health seeking. Um, we also talk about behavior change, that we can get you information, mm -hmm. but how do you translate that information into action? That's mm -hmm. where our challenge is. Mm -hmm. So the gap is how do you translate the information I give you when I tell you, oh, you really do need to know your sugar levels. Mm -hmm. do, uh, do you know exactly what sugar levels are? Do you know where to go? And when you go there, are the services readily available? And once you are given that information, mm -hmm. do you have an instrument to help you deal with that information? So today, if I'm told I'm hypertensive, do I go into a panic? Do I, am I then guided in terms of this is what you need to do to, um, uh, to ensure that you uh, manage the condition appropriately? Mm -hmm. So there are many issues around knowing, acting, and sustaining an action that um, helps you manage the condition in, um, in, uh, in a protective manner. Mm -hmm. That if I have hypertension, is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. If I'm told I have diabetes, I can live healthy with diabetes and we have a lot of people mm -hmm. including my friend uh, Ruben Magoko who has lived with diabetes for many years because he understands the condition and he knows how to manage it so again this information we give mm -hmm. must be information that's accompanied by um, support towards how to manage the condition like your grandmother mm -hmm. she has the support system mm -hmm. she has the family that understands this condition so even the caregivers around her, mm -hmm. know exactly what the triggers are and know what to do if then they need to seek care for her. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, other than the, the calls that you have mentioned, what else will, be, will you be looking into this particular week? What do you feel that needs to be filling uh, on what actions other than what the government should be doing? What else do you think will be uh, of concern during this particular period of time? <laughs> During this week, we really are working with the, our groups of people living in the NCDs. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have social media platforms. Um, there's a call to action act now. Um, a lot of us are affected, if not infected. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a lot of us have people we live with who have NCDs. We know somebody who has an NCD. A lot of our young people mm -hmm. are living with uh, type 1 diabetes. Um, cancer is a big, big challenge uh, in, the, in this country. So we need those voices out there, mm -hmm. whether it's on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. So you can actually be part of the movement for change. You remember we're talking about accountability. Mm -hmm. You're talking about progress. Uh, we are expressing our, not only our challenges, but also our successes. We have people who have lived with the uh, uh, NCDs for a long time and they are, they've found a way to manage. Mm -hmm. So we are counting on the voices of all of us, people living with NCDs, people affected with NCDs, people 
who have an interest in NCDs to talk about NCDs. So mm -hmm. the entire week, uh, the NCD Alliance of Kenya has activities every single week that are supposed to, are geared towards enlightening people about the plight of NCDs, uh, the plight of the patients. Uh, the people living with NCDs had a call to action mm -hmm. that basically was looking at the limited access to treatment, mm -hmm. then, uh, especially during this time of COVID-19, mm -hmm. and calling on reduction in taxes or um, removal, removal of taxes on some of the essential medicine, essential equipment, um, calling on county governments to invest in prevention, to invest in care for NCDs uh, in their counties. And so we can build on this momentum to begin to ask ourselves, are we doing the best we can mm -hmm. to support people with NCDs? Are we doing the best we can mm -hmm. to prevent NCDs? Because the trends have been on the upward. We really do need, if there's a curve we need to flatten, is <laughs> the curve of NCDs and mm -hmm. to bring it down, not just flatten it, but basically ensure that we have less people mm -hmm. exposed to the risks of NCDs than we have been, uh, f uh, than has been in the past. Mm -hmm. when we really didn't pay attention to NCDs in this country. All right. Now, as, as we wind up, uh, the, following the embezzlement of funds in the Ministry of Health and uh, KEMSA, we have had threats to, from withdrawal of donors to uh, our country. If that happens, how do you think uh, the NCDs department and the persons with NCDs will be impacted? I think it's a very, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. to be uh, in this context currently mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, the disease outcomes, uh, the, the outcomes from a lot of our conditions being as they are in terms of even just accessing healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had medical doctors think, talking about access to PPEs and the working conditions and some of them talking about having not been paid. I think this is happening at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And as I said, since the expose, if we call it that, mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of uh, defiance, I think, among Kenyans. Kwanini mm -hmm. nivai uh, mask. Some people are saying, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 if, if it I, I, was I, there. If it was there, uh, <laughs> that money should not, would not have been eaten. So mm -hmm. we've had a lot of statements to that effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I want to say, it's you and I who are exposing ourselves. Mm -hmm. The fact that COVID is here, it's here. So I think it's important for all of us to know that whatever is happening has not taken away COVID. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to begin. Mm -hmm. That uh, even if uh, funds were embezzled and the government has assured us they are, they are trying to find out who did this, mm -hmm. we've not done away with COVID. The infection is still here. Mm -hmm. So as even donors threaten to um, withdraw funds, we cannot abrogate our individual responsibilities mm -hmm. and uh, decide that because uh, money was taken, we can live life the way we want to live. Mm -hmm. So coming back to the question that you raised in terms of donors pulling away, a lot of uh, our um, health sector funding is donor driven. Mm -hmm. um, USAID, funds a lot of our HIV and AIDS activities, TB, malaria activities. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the other donors support, uh, direct support to healthcare. Mm -hmm. So threatening to stop funding is be, will be cutting a cord, a baby's cord, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the funding in this country, I used to have the figures uh, at some point it was as high as 80% of uh, expenditures in some of these um, areas of work mm -hmm. that were funded by uh, development partners. So that threat should be taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. I know uh, people within the HIV and AIDS uh, area of work have uh, talked about how this can be uh, uh, will definitely affect them uh, very directly. We've already seen uh, an effect of access to essential medicine mm -hmm. within this COVID period. That threat carries itself 
uh, carries a lot of, uh, uh, comes uh, with a lot of fear mm -hmm. for people who benefit directly from this support. For facilities that are supported for programs, mm -hmm. that preventive programs that are supported by donors, that threat should be taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. We cannot be casual about it. Mm -hmm. We cannot be dismissive about it. Mm -hmm. We do need to take it very seriously. All right, uh, finally, um, sti stigmatization has become an issue of our time. And during COVID-19, patients of COVID-19 have been stigmatized as well as other conditions in the past. But now with the NCDs, are there reported cases of stigmatization and what is being done about it? Okay, so COVID-19, unfortunately, and um, for a lot of us social scientists, we really do wonder why we reached where we reached with stigma. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the way in which uh, we addressed, we confronted COVID-19 in the mm -hmm. beginning, mm -hmm. where it was a disease out there, it was brought by travelers, it was a disease in Nairobi, it's a disease for people with underlying condition. And the way we then buried... Um, uh, the first um, people who passed on due to COVID-19 mm -hmm. basically build the stigma around it. True. Um, I think NCDs have not been uh, stigmatized in the past, really. Mm -hmm. um, diabetes um, uh, has been treated with a lot of, um, uh, I think, sympathy. Cancer patients have, over time, received a lot of care and support. Mm -hmm. And even you, when you hear somebody has cancer, you basically are like, what can we do to help? Mm -hmm. So that stigma, in my view, has not been there in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, sickle cell, again, maybe misunderstanding, myths and misconception regarding why we have uh, these conditions, but not stigma. Mm -hmm. I think the stigma is now... Um, being pointed towards these conditions when people say oh if you have it you have an under if you have an underlying condition then you are at mm -hmm. risk mm -hmm. so the call has been let's not stigmatize uh further stigmatize um people who are dealing with a chronic condition mm -hmm. let us embrace everybody the stigma around um uh covid19 uh is misplaced because uh, we've been told by the experts 90% of us will get COVID-19. Right. So if we are all going to get it, I think we should know how to support one another mm -hmm. and provide care and support for each one of us at this time. All right. In that same breath, this is your camera. Give us your final uh, recommendations and particularly this uh, NCDs week. Uh, during this NCDs week, we want to call upon each one of us to, to do something. Go on your Twitter handle, go on your... Um, go on your... Instagram, uh, Facebook, all your social media platforms and talk about NCDs. Encourage someone. If you live with somebody with NCDs, take time to visit them uh, or send them uh, support, send them a lovely note to say that we care for you, we understand you. So yes, this week is a week of action. Let us try the best we can do to talk about NCDs, to demystify NCDs, and for government officials, for politicians, for senators, for uh, members of parliament, for MCAs, let us focus on NCD policies. Let us focus on policies that will allow our people to protect themselves from NCDs. Let us also rally around uh, prevention and uh, especially enforcement of some of the provisions that are already legal provisions that are in place so that we can continue to prevent ourselves from uh, NCDs. We can continue to provide care and support for people with NCDs, and we can continue to care for those who are already infected. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ari, for finding time for us and uh, trying to put things into perspectives and helping us uh, to understand. And back home, I trust you have learned something. And thank you so much for keeping us company. We have come to the end of this morning show. She has been my guest, Dr. Mary Amuyunzi, Secretary NCD Alliance Kenya. And my name is Adereva Hilary. Have yourself a very good day. See you again in the evening with the news. Good day. <laughs>